a new series of coding by speedbuds with me, Vince. So, in this series, we're going to be taking a closer look at one of the most popular languages, which is Java. So, if we look at the popularity of coding languages, we see that Java was actually formerly the most popular language, but uh, as of right now, it's fallen off a little. But still, nonetheless, it is one of the most popular programming languages by far, and it's used in so many places. You can see it everywhere, on your phone, on your computer. I think one of the best examples is the video game Minecraft, which is coded in Java. One of my favorite video games of all time and an extremely popular video game. Java is used a lot by professional companies, but it doesn't mean that you can't learn it either. Because Java is a pretty easy to learn language with lots of good support online. So, much like our Python speedrun, which I highly recommend you watch if you haven't, we are going to be using our online REPL.IT to learn Java. And it takes nothing. You don't have to download anything onto your computer. All of this is done online in your browser. And so you can code at any time without any like head scratching. So how do I sign up for this course? Well, you have to go to REPL.IT slash community which I will put in the description. And it will bring up the list of courses, which you can um, subscribe to. You want to click on this Java course and press take and learn. And from there, you want to also create a REPL.IT account and such. Once you press this button, then you have to click the student thing over here. And it should bring up the Java classroom. So let's dive right in to Java. So I'm going to assume that you have no prior coding experience. If you have already watched and followed our speedruns in Python, then a lot of this should be familiar to you. And I highly recommend trying to solve some problems without having to watch this video for help. But if you're completely new, then stay along and follow on. So Java in, in Java, this is like a basic coding structure. So you have your class and your public static void. And don't worry too much about what all of that means right now. Just know that you need to write your code in this part. So write your code here, over here. So what's our first challenge? The first challenge is to create two string variables called first name and last name. Assign the string Bob to first name and Jones to last name and print them one per line. So first of all, what's a string variable? A string is like a piece of text. And that's pretty much it. So we want to create first name and we assign a variable in Java by using the equals sign. And since this is a string, it's going to be in text. And we always put our text variables in quotation marks. Like it's like, a, it's like speaking. It's like you're writing a story and your main character says something. You got to put speech marks around it. So just remember to put speech marks around whatever text you have in your code. And we want to assign to the, str the string to the word Bob. So we're just going to put string first name equals Bob and the semicolon to end the line. So um, in Java, you always need to put semicolons at the end of your list because that's how the program detects what is the end of a line. And each line will have one coding statement. And that's it. You've created your first variable. Congratulations. So. We want to create our next variable, which is going to be called last name, and we want to assign it to Jones. So we can just change this variable name. This is the variable name, um, which, and we'll refer to this variable by using this, and its value will be equal to Jones. And finally, we want to print first name and last name, one, one per line, using different print statements. So first of all, what do we mean by print? Print is writing something to the console. So over here, you can see a console. And if we want to print something, it means we want to write something in the console. And the question is, how do we do that? We need to use something called system.out.println. And don't worry too much about what all of this means. Just know that if you want to print something to the console, if you want to return something, for you to see and also for the code for this um, REPL to check, you need to put it inside these brackets and it will print it for you. In our case, we want to print first name. 
and we also want to print last name on an on a separate line um, and by using a different print statement. So we want to put last name in here. And if we run this code um, and wait for it to compile, we can see that it will print Bob on the first line and Jones on the second line. And that's because it was printing the value of the first name variable, which is Bob, in the first print statement and the value of the last name variable, which is Jones, in the second print statement. And okay, to submit the code, to submit the code, um, submitting the code checks that you've done everything correctly and that you, um, it will compare it against what it expects. And if you have done it correctly, you should show up with the screen. It says correct and you should press submit. But I'm gonna show you what happens when you get something wrong, just so you know. So let's, or remove the S, say we forgot the S here on Joe, so it's going to be Bob Joan. And this should put an error, right? So it's output mismatch. And what you want to do when you see an error is you click this what's wrong. And it shows you what's wrong with your code. So as you can see, they expected to see Bob Jones, but instead we have Bob Joe. And from this, we can see that we need to add the S back. And so this should be correct. Okay, let's move on to the next challenge. Um, and so today we're going to go from speedrun 0 0.1 or 1 to 5. Right, so for the next one, um, okay, we want to create an integer on line 4 and set it to the value 21. So first we want to ask ourselves, what is an integer? Well, an integer is like, in mathematics, it's a whole number variable. So it's like 1 or 4 or 57. These are all integers and also negative numbers like 8 or negative 9. And also like 0 is integer, any whole number without any decimals. So how do we create an integer? Well, if you remember when we were creating a string, we had to put string at the start. This is the variable type. It tells Java, OK, this variable is a string. And instead, because it's an integer, we want to use the keyword int, which tells Java, okay, this variable is an integer, it's going to be a whole number. Use it accordingly. And let's just call it number. And we want to set it to equal to the value 21. And um, we want to print this number. So system dot out dot print ln number. And if you notice here, there's no more quotation marks around the number because it's not a string, it's not gonna, it's not text, and therefore we don't want to treat it as such. We want to treat it as a whole number. Okay, so um, one other thing that I think we should mention early is how to comment out code. And what's a comment? A comment is something that will just not run in the code. So if we could comment, this is a comment, then, the code will understand that this is a comment and it will just skip this line of code um, yeah, completely. It's useful if you want to A, uh, remove parts of your code temporarily for testing and B, to um, actually show what your code does. So like here I could say, we set the number to 21 here. And the useful thing about comments is you can write whatever you want in there and Unlike code, because in code, um, every line that's not a comment, you actually have to write proper code. Otherwise, it will give you an error. Right. See, so like if I uncomment this, it's no longer a comment. And if I run this code, it's going to print an error here because this makes no sense to the computer. It only makes sense to us. So we can submit this code. And as you can see, or as you can see now, we've got it correct. So we now know how to assign strings and numbers in Java. Pretty good. So let's move on to the next one. Um, okay, so it's creating variables and we want to create, okay, so it's introducing us to two new types, a Boolean and a double. Um, Boolean and a double. Let's quickly read the problem. So we want to create a Boolean variable called is true and set it to false. Create a double called money and set it to 99999.99. Print money and then print is true at skipping to the next line. 
So first we need to talk about what a Boolean is and what a double is. A Boolean is like a yes or no statement, except that the two values are true and false. So a Boolean can be equal to true or it can be equal to false. And those are the only two values it can have. We'll get more onto why Booleans are very important later on. But for now, just know that it can only have those two values. So we want to create a Boolean called is true. And remember, putting Boolean before is true tells Java what the type is. It's a Boolean and set it to false. And we now get to double. So what's a double? A double is um, a, a number with a decimal point or not. But it's a number that can have a decimal point. So if we have an integer and we have, we want to just put a decimal point on the number, so 45.2. Uh, int money equals 99999.99. This won't work. You cannot have decimal points on integers. And as you can see, it's giving us an error. Instead, we want to use a double. And just think of a double as a number that has a decimal point, or that can have a decimal point. And yeah, so now we want to print money, and then it's true. So system, um, and there's a little trick. For this. So system dot out dot print ln and it wants us to print these two variables without skipping to the next line, which means we're doing them in one print statement. And we can't just oops, sorry about that. We can't just say money and then plus true uh, is true because this is trying to add your 99999.99 to false. It makes no sense to the computer whatsoever. And therefore, we need to make them convert these two values to strings and then add them. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to put an empty string in the middle of them. What this empty string does is it's saying we're adding all of these values together as if they were strings. And so it's going to convert each value into a string and then add them together. So if I run this code now, um, as you can see, it's going to print 99999 false. And I think that's what they want us to return. So that's our value. As you can see, we're correct. Um, for our next challenge, um, see what they want us to do. Oh, they want us to print the following pattern asterisks and hashtags. Okay, that's cool. So I'm going to teach you the easy way to do this first. And the easy way to do this is to have five print statements, each with one line of this pattern. And remember, if you have another print statement, it will go to the next line. So we have one star, two star, three stars, two hashtag, two hashtag, and one hashtag. And if we run this code, it will be completely fine and we will be printing this pattern. But there is a much better way to do it than this, because right now we're executing five lines of code when we only need to execute one. And the question is, how are we going to make it go to a new line? And we do that by using this character backslash n. And backslash n is a special kind of character called an escape character. And what you would need to imagine it as is it's like, telling your computer to press enter on the keyboard and move to the next line. So if we put one star a backslash n two stars, and we run this, it's not going to print one star backslash n two stars. It's going to print the, the, the two stars on the next line. And yeah, if you want to learn more about this, and there are also very a lot of other escape characters, you can Google that. And you can. we're also going to discuss it at a later point. But right now, just know if you want to move your code to the next line, you have to put backslash n. And now we can insert the three stars, backslash n, um, two hashtags, backslash n, hashtag, run this code, and it should output the pattern we see on the right, as you can see. So if we submit this code, we should get it all correct. No problems. OK, on to the final challenge of this um, episode. So finally, we move to creating variables. So we want to create a string variable called name. We've already met strings. This should be no problem. Create an integer variable called age. We've already met integers, no problem. 
and we want to create an integer value called IQ and set it to the value of H, then print the 3. So, you remember, we create a string variable by setting this, by putting the prefix string and then the variable name, and we want to put it to Chen. We create an integer by using int, and we want to create age and say 50, and we also want to create int IQ and set it to the value of age. How do we do that? We can simply say int IQ equals age. And what this does is it's setting the value of IQ to the value of age, and since the value of age is 50, it's setting IQ to 50. Now we want to print all of them. So this seems relatively straightforward as usual. So we first want to print name, and we want to print age and IQ without skipping to a new line. How do we do that? Well, we want to make sure we're adding them together as strings. So if we put just age plus IQ, yes, this will work. This will run without errors, but it's going to give us the wrong answer. And that's because, oh, excuse that. That's because age and IQ are integers, and so if we add them together, it's going to add them like real numbers and say 50 plus 50 equals 100, which is what we get. But that's not the answer that the code wants us to give. They want us to print the value of age and the value of IQ, and we do that by inserting a, an empty string in between them. And what this empty string does is, remember, it converts all of the other value, values to strings, and it's going to print all of them as strings. And when you add strings, you just add them together. So, you know, here, if it's a number, 50 plus 50 equals 100. But if it's a string, 50 plus 50 is equal to 5,050. And so it's going to print 5050, which is the correct answer in this case. So if we submit, oh, sorry, I'll show you guys if it prints the correct answer. If it's not glitching, sorry, I'll reload this. Okay, if we run this code now, um, as you can see, it's printed 5050 or 5050 and it works perfectly. And so that's all for today's speedrun of creating variables and printing. I hope you enjoyed this speedrun. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like on this video and leave a comment down below as to whether you want to see more of these Java speedruns or you want to see something else. And as always, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you never miss out on any coding content from us. See you next time.